What's up, everybody? Dre back at it again with another video. Today, we're going to be talking about Ready or Not because it just came out with another briefing. This one is briefing number 63 Commander Mode and Narrative. Let's just go ahead and hop into it here. It starts off with saying, Attention, officers. Thank you for joining us for our 63rd edition of our bi weekly development briefing. Today, we go in depth on what you can expect from the game's campaign mode and narrative. The main focal point of these changes is what's known as Commander Mode, the name of our new campaign mode that brings with it countless new immersive features. In Los Sueños, how you enter the fatal funnel of each door will seal your fate and that of those around you. Some of the elements from the commander mode that we will cover are the progressive mission unlocks, permadeath, roster system, behavioral traits, officer therapy, and HQ expansion functionality. In the second section of this briefing, we will also detail progress on our narrative techniques, such as briefing, messages, on-call officers, interactive audio device storytelling, novel tools for storytelling, such as modular vehicle license plates, and the accompaniment of auxiliary in-game organizations. Throughout this briefing, you will see media that portrays the various topics we discuss. Please keep in mind that the development content depicted in this briefing is a work in progress and may be subject to change in the game's final state. And then they go on to talk about volume 63 development briefing summary points and not change logs. I'm just going to run through this really fast here. Mission for single player unlock one after another in order of completion. Single player playthroughs will have permadeath for each of your officers. Oh, wow. In Iron Man mode, your save will be deleted if you die. Oh my god. There will be a large amount of unique behavioral traits for the officers in your long potential roster, which will each impact the gameplay style of your team. Mission conduct outcome will affect the mental health of your officers. Unbearable levels of stress causing them to quit or worse. Over five new areas of the station with revamped existing areas such as the firing range and shoot house. At least one unique briefing per mission that can take various formats along with the extensive role that your tactical tablet plays for most mission information. 30 to 40 new interactable audio narrative devices added to the game. Modular license plates on vehicles that allow us to easily customize all aspects of them during development to fit a sort of character in each mission. The description of some of these federal law enforcement organizations present in the narrative, including the DETE, Drug Enforcement Tactical Element, the FISA, Federal Investigation and Security Agency, the Marshals, and the Park Service. Teaser conclusion. That's a lot of stuff that they're adding. Take command. In the boots of David Judge, Beaumont. Oh my god, we actually have a name for this guy? You are the commander of the LSPD SWAT team. This is by no means a figurehead role in game for commander mode. It is up to you to compose your team from a long dynamic roster. Pick your plans, give orders, keep your teammates as well as yourself alive and healthy in mind and body and conduct your missions with integrity. All three of major systems detailed in sections below, permadeath, officer traits and mental health, interplay to provide an additional layer of tension to your team's success and conduct in a mission. In the commander mode, your mission score is meaningful, and the specific conduct used to achieve the score will lead to a subsequent long-term impact on your team, positive or negative. If you arrest all the suspects but kill a civilian, expect detrimental repercussions on your team's stress levels. It is rare for me to actually kill civilians but the one thing that I do notice about the current AI is that they were the ones that were killing the civilians. So if that happens to me, I will be pissed. Not gonna lie. Let's hope they actually made the AI better. High stakes progress. The extreme state of the systematic despair in Los Sueños has left everyone at risk. The dangerous nature of your encounters will spiral the further you go. Life's taken is further violence, and it's your duty to uphold what dignity you can for future prosperity by diffusing hostile situations that are too far out of hand. Unnecessarily escalating these missions make them more unpredictable and turbulent for all involved. This escalation will often provoke suspects and civilians to resort to more drastic measures and missions. Each successful completion of a given mission will unlock the next one in succession. For single player, the story of Los Sunas and the trials you will face unveil themselves to you in each mission as you come across them. Officer permadeath for all single player playthroughs means your team members won't get a second chance. Our new SWAT AI has an exceptional increase in their survivability and tactical effectiveness, but it's up to you to make sure the specific tactics you order are sound in each unique decision in game. If a SWAT officer dies, there will always be a negative impact on your team's mental health. Iron Man mode even makes your own survival imperative, where you risk the deletion of your save when you, as the commander, die. Oh my god, this is Jesus Christ. A save slot for the commander mode and iron mode is being shown here, which this is a save, right? Commander mode. So this would be the first save, this is a new save, this is another save. Okay. And you 
you can do Iron Man. Oh my god, dude. The campaign is gonna be tough as nails. Oh my god. Up next, we got squad composition. Your roster will consist of a pool of unique SWAT officers with varying behavioral traits, specialties, and backgrounds from across the city of Los Sueños and its surrounding counties. Topped off with a broad selection of high quality studio voice acting, the composition of behavioral traits, the officers in your roster have an effect on your team's operational effectiveness for different command styles. Some work in progress types of behavioral traits are explained below. Players who orient their gameplay around more aggressive tactics may choose officers that have a higher resilience to stress, meaning the traumatic situations they encounter might not seem to affect them as much. Alternatively, players may prioritize having a team with a high level of situational awareness, with the veteran trait allowing them to detect traps without having to check first. The morale officer trait will contribute to a team's higher level of emotional relief, resulting from taking suspects alive. Furthermore, for multiplayer co-op PvE, you will be able to choose character voice lines and heads in cooperative, of which there are 13 unique voice acted characters and a total of 18,445 lines of dialogue in different situations, quiet and loud contexts. There are also 26 unique officer head models across four general ethnic backgrounds grunter director wow that's certainly a lot more than what we had before i think we had around like what was it six to eight if we include the fbi officers pretty dope but moving on here value of conscience how your team conducts itself in a mission and scenario they encounter can lead to a psychological effect on your officers that is critical to address to ensure proper effectiveness in the field your officers will receive check-ins with a mental health unit attached to your team who relays the outcome in their respective files if an officer's mental health becomes unbearable it may even lead them to quit or worse. We aim for stress to be a metagame loop that reinforces good decision making and respect for the encounters against threats and non-threats. While you may succeed by killing every suspect in a level to keep your officers safe, you will not be able to do so with impunity. The toll it takes on your team to witness such brutal and aggressive tactics decision making will have run-on effects that will cripple your team's composition. Runter. Yeah, that's definitely gonna throw a lot of wrenches in people's plans that just wanna kill everybody we got a bunch of pictures coming up but it says here that there are different mental health review screens in game following the completion of your various missions showing differing physical and mental statuses across the team along with advice from the mental health unit we got the first picture here oh my god they actually have names although the pictures look exactly the same these aren't like randomly generated Right. These dudes literally look the same. Park, Caleb, Gonzalez, Alejandro, Armstrong, Alex, Davis, Jameson. I hope they don't look the same in game. But let's see. It says high stress here. Stressed. Crisis. He might quit or, I don't know, kill himself. Also stressed. Also stressed. Message from the doc. I've heard a few worrying things recently and noticed an alarming trend of rising negativity regarding the LSPD in the eyes of the public. I just wanted to check in and see how you're handling it. Remember to take some downtime between missions and let yourself recharge mm -hmm. and we got another picture here anxious anxious killed in action jesus perez esteban william liam torres esteban oh the brothers they got brothers in here oh boy martinez diego a message from doc i don't think i need to remind you that when anybody on your team is assigned a canceling schedule with the meu they are not eligible for selection in missions i'm not saying anything more but just be careful how you handle these guys because the last thing you want is to be left short-handed especially with the city being the way it is right now are these brothers and one is dead jesus christ Park caleb high stressed Armstrong Alex, high stress. Davis Jameson, high stress. Gonzalez. Alejandro killed an action. I mean, I totally get it. This mission is fucking bullshit. A few of the guys on your team were looking a little fatigued after the last mission. We have room to accommodate a few new MEU referrals, but probably not everybody. Talk to your team, and if you feel like any of them need to talk, get in touch. I shouldn't have to remind you of this, but once the referral comes in, that officer is no longer eligible for active duty. I advise you to think carefully about who you refer to when. Oh my god, is this gonna be like freaking XCOM where we send him off to like get rehabilitated and he's gone for like like an entire week or something or like an entire mission or two oh man decision decision at least it makes the campaign a lot more interesting jalapeno pepsi and my discord informed me that if all of your officers were to die you would be able to choose new officers but if some die and you have some that are still alive 
the new recruits might put the veterans off a little. They might become a little more stressed. As it stands right now, the current single player is in game, but it's been renamed to practice mode. So you don't have to play commander mode if you don't want to, but they're debating on whether or not they want to make all missions completely free to play in the practice mode or if you have to unlock it. So I guess we'll see on that one. I do have to wonder if it's possible to play with players because I'm not a huge fan of playing with AI as they tend to be dumb, but maybe Void Interactive fixed the AI I guess we'll have to see. But moving on here, your home base. The station is more than just a place you wait before each mission. It is the central heart of your operation and the entire police department. With an overhaul of existing station rooms, an already shown new building, and over five entirely new areas within the building. There's plenty of room in your home throughout the course of the story. Then they describe this picture as a semi-obscured blueprint of the new station. We'll leave most of the new areas for you to explore for now. Then we got the the picture here i wonder if this building is connected at all to the uh current building that we have or if it's just like completely new not too sure but this definitely looks a lot smaller than what i was imagining but pretty cool Let's see what it looks like the shoot house within the station now contains a new layout and timer to count your completion time put your skills to the test to complete your skill and glory and improve shooting range with new targets that have higher level of interactivity is also included targets on rails are also able to move forward and backward for easy and analysis of your shots grouping reflex training targets are also now available with targets that fall and stand back up between shots as well as a muscle memory training target that alternates back and forth with each successive impact between each of your missions head to the evidence locker to examine sorted mission specific pieces of intricately detailed 3d model evidence accompanied with detailed descriptions that relates to the deeper lore of each mission you complete although you may not be a detective utilize this opportunity to get the additional insight into the world of the sueños and to recap your team's accomplishments the evidence you find here will sometimes also shine a light on the experience of survivors victims and otherwise innocent people caught up in each mission story and then he continues to describe this picture here saying a heart-wrenching piece of evidence from gas implores you to reflect on the experiences around you and then it shows a picture of evidence that you can find this is very cool how we're actually going to be able to fill up all of these evidence things and then see what we might have missed or you know connect the dots crystals teddy crystal latens teddy taken into evidence by the lspd forensics the bear is torn on one side presumably a design of the child's stress during the incident hmm you can even drag to rotate zoom and scroll it's gonna be like resident evil where we like flip it around and then find something inside that'd be interesting well, anyways narrative techniques your environment is even fuller in storytelling than before with fleshed out narratives for each mission that are accompanied by each countless narrative devices you will be fully immersed in the world of los sueños however the dreams the name of the city alludes to are occluded by the nightmares manifesting all around it tread carefully as you scour the depths briefing messages on call officers interactive audio device storytelling, modular vehicle license plates, and auxiliary in-game organizations are all elaborated upon in this section. Your briefing. Each mission will have a unique briefing setup that can take various formats with at least one briefing media per mission. Excerpts from these briefings will be visible on your tactical tablet to review during the mission for any operationally relevant information. And they go on to talk about the image below, which says a placeholder example of one of these briefing excerpts where the audio can be replayed from. Oh, so they show a picture of what I assume is the phone, and you can actually replay a bunch of the stuff that's on it. I guess it gets saved here. Seizing the moment of opportunity, a posse of delinquent meth head kids execute their plan in order to support a crippling addiction. And then they have the uh, dispatch here. 911, what is the nature of your emergency? Caller, I think someone is robbing the city bank. Oh, this is a zoom. Wait, this picture is like zoomed in or something. Rescue all the civilians, detain any unarmed contacts. And one color disappeared from the line after report steps getting near. Find him. Find the veteran? Find and report the status of the veteran. Hmm. Interesting. Most of your team's operations can be monitored and controlled within the tactical tablet as an immersive interactable menu, allowing extensive information to be available at a glance without breaking your immersion. On call. We've shown off a glimpse of some of the rapid response outfits in the past, but there's further narrative purpose to be 
being able to customize your SWAT outfit for non-uniform wear. During commander mode, your fellow officers and missions may at times be unexpectedly needed for a mission while on call, meaning otherwise going about their normal personal life. This results in them wearing more casual clothes to the scene itself, with an extremely wide potential of possible clothing combinations between our different gloves, vests, helmets, boots, eyewear, shirts, pants, and more. That's pretty cool. All of a sudden you get called up and it's like, oh crap, I forgot my uniform. I guess I'm gonna go on with my khakis. The image below is an example of yet another combination of clothing possible for a rapid response outfit in the customization screen. Though your officer will probably have a helmet. And they got this cool picture here. It's interesting hairstyle. But they continue on to say, it's a good thing your officer was able to make the call, but now maybe you should pay a little extra attention identifying your friend or foe when you encounter them during a mission. Oh, okay. I don't even think about that you're to the ground the calls you've already been hearing in the station phone line we're just scratching the surface aside from briefings there will be between 30 to 40 new interactable audio narrative devices added to the game these new interactable audio narrative devices will be scattered around various missions including the station awesome character specific licenses perhaps one of our most novel narrative features this one is parked outside of every mission you visit framing not only the location and context but the sorts of individuals that are present in the mission before you even make entry. An intuitive, fully customizable modular license plate system, allowing us to choose between occupations and organizations to suit different characters in game when first developing a map. Enhancing environmental storytelling further, note that by modular, these plates do not necessarily change each time you load a mission. This is more of a development workflow technique. This feature is a perfect complement to our large array of vehicles shown off in the Volume 61 dev briefing, and the gift below showcases the wide variety of options in our fully customizable modular license plate system we got this uh thing right here some interesting license plates it looks like there's even some that tried to like scratch it off right here so they wouldn't get caught immediately i kind of wish that they looked well i mean i guess they do kind of look like california plates a little bit at least the white ones here but anyways very cool these plates even have alternative styles for each variation and the plate numbers are easily customized as well as randomized with a couple of buttons to ensure every vehicle you encounter is properly unique for example outside the hospital you will see a swath of hospital staff affiliated license plates auxiliary organizations your team may be elite forged from a tough beat that is los sueños we are the only law enforcement group in the narrative and you're not alone in your struggle federal law enforcement agencies play a large role in the narrative as well help to set up operations for your unit follow leads and separately conducting operations away from your team among just a few of the law enforcement organizations operating in los sueños that you will encounter throughout the narrative are the dete drug enforcement tactical element who are a specialized unit working with the Los Sueños Police Department Narcotics Division. They collaborate closely with the CBP tactical teams at the border and focus on combating drug trafficking. The FISA Federal Investigation and Security Agency who acts as an investigative authority for the United States government. It is responsible for maintaining national security, investigating federal crimes, and protecting the United States and its citizens from various threats. The Marshals who are an elite tactical unit responsible for executing high-risk warrant operations typically involve federal crimes in lower areas of Los Sueños, including North Hills, San Euro, Makate, and Muerto Mesa. Trained for precision and equipped for danger, they confront adversity head-on, upholding justice. Last but not least, in this limited list, we have the Park Service, who is a highly trained law enforcement unit assigned to protect the national parks in the Los Sueños area, including Sierra del Sueños, tasked with combating drug traffickers, manufacturers, and other criminal enterprises that exploit these parks, the U.S. Park Police operates with specialty tactics and equipment to ensure public safety and preserve natural resources. In conclusion, it will soon be time for you to truly take command of your team and the impact your missions have as you move through our immersive game world. There's more parts to many of these systems that you will uncover as you progress through your playthrough. Before we sign off, it's been cooking, marinating, and well worth the wait. So here's a quick look at just a few capabilities of our highly anticipated overhauled SWAT AI. And they describe these gifts as a sneak peek at what's right outside the door for SWAT AI, courtesy of Ali. I feel like I haven't heard of that guy in a while. And here they are opening up the door, and oh, he's actually checking around. Oh, that's actually, that's like what a player would do. Like, they'd like go around the door to see 
you know, if there's anything there. Now, I don't know if that's like the most tactical thing to do because he's kind of like exposing himself there. But I mean, that's literally what I would do. Like I would just like look around the door before I push in, you know, just to try to see if I could get shots on corners and stuff. But then we got this next one here and it looks like he's looking underneath the bed to see if, if there's any baggage or something. I wonder if he's doing this like automatically or if he ordered him to do that. I mean, it looks automatic to be honest. Are these guys wearing like a lot more bags I've noticed. Like they got a lot more stuff on their back from what I remember. But with this concludes their 63rd development briefing. Be sure to tune in next time for more development news. Man, that was a lot of information. Not gonna lie, that that's a lot of stuff on the single player right here that sounds a, like really good, but also really like, oh man, this is gonna be a pain in the ass. Before I end the video, there is one last thing that I wanna talk about here. In the Discord, they ended up showing off how they completely replaced all the windows in the game to actually look like proper windows. We got a video here showcasing Valley with brand new windows. Let's take a look. It is confirmed that you could completely break all of them, basically. Some people on the Discord asked if there was going to be bulletproof windows and what they would look like, and one of the developers showed off this picture, which I believe is gas station. Yes, this is gas station for sure. You can see through it, and it's also bulletproof. Unfortunately, though, when asked if they were going to have reflective mirrors, the developers said that, unfortunately, no, it's not likely because they can't seem to find a good way to optimize reflective windows, which I, I totally get. Like, I would rather have a stable game than look at a window and it tanking my FPS. It was the reason why they took it out initially. Never say never, but unless they find a way to actually optimize reflective glasses, they're probably not coming back. So just that I dropped that in here. Another thing that I thought was interesting was them showing off a video made by their incredible replay viewer system. The replay viewer will likely be available for everyone once 1.0 releases. So let's take a look at the video. So this is cool, but I kind of wish that they would have shown off a little more of the UI, see what it looks like, you know, the play and go forward feature, pause and all that. But yeah, that's pretty damn cool. Can't wait to try that out. And that's pretty much it for the extra stuff. Back to the video. But what are your guys' thoughts? Let me know what you think down below, because I'm going to get the hell up out of here. Thank you all for coming out to watch, and I guess I'll catch you in the next one. Be sure to subscribe, join the channel, and uh, yeah, I guess I'll catch you in the next one. Bye bye I would just like to take the time to thank my amazing supporters, starting off with Fear Operative, Brigador24, Divine Demigod, Hazel, True Forever, Iggy. If you're someone that would like to join this list, become a member or join the Patreon to keep the channel going. Thank you all for coming out to watch, and I guess I'll catch you in the next one. Bye bye.